Yes, everybody, welcome back to another brand new match preview on the channel. Hope you guys are keeping well and safe. Wolves are hosting Newcastle United this weekend at Molyneux, and I'll be giving my thoughts ahead of this game, and we'll get the Newcastle perspective later on in the video as well. As always, be sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And a big shout out to our channel partners over at Football Prizes. Another Wolves prize up for grabs this week, and it's a fantastic dual shirt framed uh, with Jao Gomez and Mario Lamina, two shirts, both signed in a frame, available and up for grabs on this week's raffle. So be sure to check that out using the link in the top of the description down below. And also, a big shout out to everyone that supported us and supported the Wolves Foundation on this weekend's, or last weekend's I should say, Wolves Content Creators Cup. And you may well have seen that Talking Wolves were the champions. We got to the final last year and this year, despite a rocky start, we weren't great in the group stages. We managed to come out on top and win on penalties against the 77 club in the final. So a superb uh, performance. A big thanks to everyone that supported us, the Walls Foundation. Big thanks to Dazzling Day for sorting it out as well. And of course, big shout out to my teammates uh, for the Talking Walls FC as well. But Walls back in Premier League action after an international break. It was quite important Walls got something on the board uh, after the draw away at Nottingham Forest. And they'll be heading now back to Molyneux and hopefully uh, looking for three points. I won't be there this week. And I hate missing Wolves games. I won't even be able to catch this game live. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm sure all the content will still run as normal. I think Jordy's on review duty. We'll have the fans react and the boys will be doing the podcast as well that should come out Monday evening all being well. Um, but we've had some news from Gary O'Neill today in the pre-match press conference. Sam Johnston set to start. Jo um, Jose Sarr. He's at Compton. He's training, training well as well. And Gary O'Neill has pretty much said there is going to be opportunities for him. I do wonder if Jose will play against Brighton in the Cup on Wednesday as well. Um, but Sam Johnson pretty much set to start this uh, weekend against Newcastle United. Uh, however, there will be late fitness checks for some players. Um, Lamina and Aitnori Nori both... Um, left out of their international uh, fixtures for Gabon and Algeria. They're going to have late fitness checks this weekend. As will Jason Mascara, who did score for Colombia in the win against Argentina this week, but came off uh, with quite a heavy injury towards the end. Uh, so all three of those late fitness checks, I'm hoping all three should be fit. I think in terms of importance, probably eight Nori, especially if we're sticking with Totti at left, left back for now. Eight Nori probably isn't. Uh, the be-all and end-all if he doesn't come in. But certainly Mosquera and Lamina, it'll be interesting to see how Gary deals with those. Uh, Carlos Forbes as well, who we uh, signed very, very late in, in uh, the transfer window, didn't appear in the squad against Forrest, although Andre did, but Forbes wasn't in the squad. He actually, again, scored during the international break uh, towards the end of the game for Portugal under-21s, uh, but he's thought to be in contention to be in the match day squad as well. Again, I don't think... Forbes will start, um, but it'd be interested to see how uh, Gary deals with the likes of Andre coming in now. Of course, he came off the bench. Will he start against uh, Newcastle on Sunday? Got to consider a lot of travel time, a lot of game time for Andre for Brazil as well, who had a fairly productive international uh, break. Uh, but let's look at the predicted lineup for my predicted lineup anyway for uh, this weekend's game against Newcastle United. And we're looking uh, in goal, like I mentioned already, Sam Johnston uh, should be starting in goal. I think Totti will keep his place at left back. I think the back four will probably remain unchanged with Nelson Tomato, Dawson, and Mosquera if fit to start there. I do wonder if we'll go with a 4 3 3 again if fit. Lamina, Andre, and Mario Lamina. Um, and then a front three, Mateus Cunha, Jorgen Strand Larsen. And I think he'll probably go with Huang, although there's so many options there now for Gary O'Neill. Um, a lot of talent on the bench for Wolves. You've got jean ric de Bellegarde who could easily fill in that slot and scored the goal against uh, Nottingham Forest. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't think Forbes will start, but, you know, with Sarabia, um, so many, Rodrigo Gomez, you know, so many good options there at the moment for Wolves. But that's how I think it, it potentially could start on Sunday. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below as well. If In terms of prediction... I'm going to go with a 1-1 draw. It's quite a popular result. If you look at the history of this fixture over the last number of years, a 1-1 has been a very, very common result. And I've got a feeling that may well be the same again on Sunday as well. But we'll go on to the uh, away perspective now. I spoke to a good friend of mine, Mad, 
who's a big Irish Newcastle fan, to get his thoughts ahead of this fixture and what we can expect from Eddie Howe's side uh, before Sunday. So then, guys, delighted to be alongside Paul, a.k.a. Mad, from the Irish Mags and True Faith podcast. Big Newcastle fan. Mad, good to have you back on the channel, mate. How are you keeping? Has it been a year or there thereabouts already, uh, Dave? Where did that go? Uh, yeah, it must be. I, I don't know. When did I have you on? I must, I must have you When did we last play? Did a preview, uh, but I can't remember if it was like, you know, home or away. Molyneux game. The Molyneux game was before Christmas because um, that's when Neto got his first injury, unfortunately. Yes. Um, yeah. I can't even remember with the St. James's Park result. That I was. I remember late. I was actually at that game and yeah, we fair, I think we gave you a good 3 nil or uh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That happens yeah, up there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, well. thankfully, we're back in Molyneux. They've been very close games ever since sort of both teams have sort of back and solidified themselves in, in the Premier League, Mad, A lot of 1-1s, a lot of goals from Juan Ki Chan, a lot of dodgy decisions, normally in Newcastle United's favour, if I'm, if I'm completely honest. But, As they always. Uh, <laughs> how, how, have you, how have you found the start to the season so far? How did you find pre-season, the transfers for you boys? Because, you know... Big spenders over the last couple of years. I don't think it was quite the case so much this summer, was it? No, and you know what? Seeing as we're both here, I would argue that maybe both of our clubs have had quite disappointing transfer windows, especially in mm -hmm. comparison to some of the other like Premier League teams that are kind of in and around where where we are and in between us and so on. Um, very underwhelming from our perspective, considering. I suppose people forget we have you know we're not the richest club in the league. We have the richest owners in the league, but with PSR. <laughs> You know, we, we had to scramble and sell players on that 30th of June deadline. So we lost, yeah. obviously, Jan Minta, who was, you know, tipped to be our starting right winger. We're, we, we were obviously trying to get a right winger. We never got one. And Elliot Anderson. So no marquee signing. Uh, I would kind of safely say we didn't really bring in anyone that actually improves our first 11. Um, mm. But probably converse to how you might feel, we were lucky in that we didn't lose any of our big, big names uh, and obviously we'll come on to, uh, you know, you, you know yourself, obviously, with Pedro Neto and Max Kilman going. Um, yeah, that's where, you know, we can probably count ourselves a little bit more fortunate um, in terms of how the season has started. Probably slower than people expected. My original thing was, you know, well, yes, we've not brought in a whole load of new names and the players you brought in are largely squad players. But I thought maybe we'll come in and be a lot more settled as a result because mm -hmm. a lot of the same team, a lot of the same players. But we did look quite disjointed, definitely not full of confidence, still figuring things out in midfield. Um, we were unfortunate in the opening game, that Fabian Scher red card, which was embarrassing to watch, really, from <laughs> our friend Ben Burton Diaz. The less said about him, the better. Um, but that, that almost threw us off very early. I was at that game, 28 minutes in, it happened in front of me, and I just couldn't believe it. Uh, yeah. So it's a very newcastle thing to happen. And I, th I think that just kind of just rattled us a little bit for the opening few games, but Ultimately, we've played three league games, seven points unbeaten. Um, haven't played brilliantly. A lot more to come. And uh, yeah, I think they, they need to step it up. And hopefully, not for you or your listeners, <laughs> but hopefully for us, uh, Molyneux will be a good place to start. Yeah, I know. What's the, also, what's the ambition? Sort of. Obviously, you speak to Newcastle fans both in Ireland and I'd assume from Newcastle itself. But what's the ambition? Is it to get back into European football again this year? Yeah, I think the words have been carefully chosen by, you know, like we've had Paul Mitchell, who's our kind of recently hired um, kind of head of recruitment, I guess, sporting director, um, very much, you know, say the words Europe and not Champions League. Uh, yeah. And I think, you know, if you ask Eddie Howe, Eddie Howe usually just plays it very cool and says, I'm only focused on the next game or, you know, we're ambitious, but he'll never really, he'll never go so far yeah. as to say what we're aiming for. But I think the combined ambition would be, you know, looking at what the, how we did in the transfer window, uh, looking at the squad we have, Europe, I would expect to be a minimum. Even if we didn't have a fantastic window with incomings, there's still a hell of a squad there. You know, Isaac, Gordon, Bruno, and then we've got players coming back. Sven Botman is, is, is back training. You know, he's he's a top tier centre back, um, hasn't played since kind of early in the earlier in the year, in the calendar year. And um, obviously then Tonali, who, you know, I don't know if you caught a glimpse of him in the in the international break, but he's come back in fantastic shape. It fit as hell. Yeah. Looks you'd like hope he's got so, the appetite. You'd hope so. Yeah, you'd expect so. I mean, it's been 10 months, right? Um, but he, an unbelievable assist for Italy in that goal that DeMarco scored as well, kind of a flick over the top. So we have a lot going. We do have a lot of positive things going. And um, it's just a case of getting it all together. But 
I suppose one thing I'll say timing wise, maybe something to warn you lads about would be we've had a pretty good international break from a Newcastle perspective. Like Isaac was on the score sheet twice for Sweden in two different games. Gordon playing for England there. Lewis Hall was um, smashing it for the England under 21s. Tonali for Italy. Bruno was playing for Brazil. So you'd hope that um, they'll bring that sharpness in and didn't pick up any injuries, which after last season is a godsend because we had a terrible yeah. time last year. I mean, uh, we'll, uh, I'll do sort of the rest of the preview following uh, Gary O'Neill's press conference, but we had a few players, well, Jason Mascara, our starting centre-back, came off injured for Colombia um, on, on Tuesday night, I think. Uh, Ryan Aitnori and Mario Lamina pulled out the squads injured. Of course, that happened. That can happen mm. quite often, but um, but we're similar. You know, we've had we've had a bit of success. A, cu- a couple of players on on the score sheet, which is good. My concern is we've got quite a few players out in South America, um, and it's not a it's not a two three hour flight, is it? You know, you're talking no, like not at all. twelve plus hours. You know, and you know, it's tiring. That is very very tiring. So I am intrigued to see how we line up because we've got Andre, the new central midfielder as well. He would have been in the Brazil squad. He said this week that he's sort of leaning on the likes of João Gomes and Bruno uh, Gamarish to um, to settle into to the English culture and so on. Um, so I, I'm intrigued with that battle, certainly on um, on, on Sunday. Who, who else for you, Matt, are the key players to watch? I mean, Isaac's the one. He's Gordon. Has he started off the season quite well? I mean... He was in my fantasy Premier League. I've taken him out now because he's had a quiet start, Anthony Gordon. But he, there was rumours even he was may have moved on in the summer. It's a really funny one. Um, and the media adds to a lot of things. But I think the bottom line, this is a player who finished last season. Absolutely confidence blowing out his ears. He was destroying opposition right backs like all the way up to the end of the season. He won like a record or equal to record number of penalties or something like that. Just just being such a nightmare to defend against. Double figures for goals and assists. And everybody, everyone I was listening to and, you know, even like the likes of Lineker and Shearer and on the podcast were like, Gordon has to start on the left for England. I what did so. he get? Four minutes? He got four mm-hmm. minutes in a, in a tournament where England went to the final. So, you know, you're, t- you're taking a, a, young, a young guy full of confidence. He's hearing all this hype about himself and then... Yeah, he just didn't get any. I, I feel like he's he's come out of it then, confidence a bit battered and bruised. You know, you, you need love from a manager. He probably doesn't feel like he got it from Southgate. You don't know what conversations happen behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. And then there was these whispers and rumours that Liverpool were going to go in for him. Uh, and he's a Liverpool fan as a, as a kid, even though he played for Everton. So there was a lot of talk. Oh, his head's been turned and all of a sudden his head won't be in it. But uh, yeah. I didn't really believe the rumours that Liverpool were going to go in for him. Like they got yeah. Luis Diaz there, obviously Diogo Jota, like they're stacked. Cody Gakpo, they didn't. They don't need a left side forward at all. You know, they'd probably be more worried about the right with with Salah's future unclear. Yeah. Um, so he started the season quite slow, but I would look at it in the sense of when he had that great tournament for the England under twenty ones in the uh, the Euros. I think they won. Um, you know, he had quite a narrow break, but he was full of confidence coming out. He got player of the tournament. He was scoring goals. He was creating, and he and he hit the ground running in last season, uh, or this yeah, it was last season. And then, quite the opposite, he had limited time to prepare in preseason with with Newcastle, but no confidence coming in. So he, I just don't think you can expect a young player like that to suddenly be where he was, uh, you know, as of May two thousand twenty four when he finished the season. Mm. Um, but you know how quickly a week can change everything. A couple England caps. Do you know? Yeah. Uh, that's a, like Lee Carsley was his manager for the under 21s when he won that player of the tournament. So, again, if you're going to fear something, you might fear a rejuvenated, you know, full of confidence Anthony Gordon coming back in to say, Do you know, I actually am that fucking good. And uh, yeah. I'd be worried about that. Yeah. I mean, I've taken him out of my fantasy team now, Matt. So, I mean, as long as he. No, well, I don't want him to score against Wolves anyway, <laughs> but it'd be Sod's Law that he is going to score on Sunday, isn't it? But. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think he made he made comments about Southgate anyway. I think uh, he said that the tournament was a failure. He didn't rely on certain players enough, and that was, I think, a message to him. But I mean, sticking on the the subject of England, I think Eddie Howe is amongst the favourites to potentially become the new England manager if Carsley doesn't get the job. Um, are you worried that you know Eddie Howe may move on at the end of the season to to become the England boss? The only thing that would make me worried is if we Newcastle go through another window let's let's say we go to january and maybe one of two scenarios are happening maybe we're going really well in the league 
and we have a chance at Europe or even better. We need to bolster the squad to to push that to the next level. We're going to pick up injuries. You know, there's going to be more international breaks. There's going to be more games. Yeah. Uh, or we're struggling in the league and we need reinforcements. If he's not backed in that sense, because like I, I look at the summer window, I know we had PSR being an issue and all of that, but like this is a club that got into the Champions League last season, has picked up money from sponsorship deals with Adidas, Sela, and obviously the Champions League revenue. I, I would argue he wasn't backed in the summer. You know, he's not the one trying to negotiate deals and there's been changes at board level. So yeah. if we were to go through that January window and if he was to emerge from that feeling, I'm just not getting the backing here, then that would make me a bit more fearful. Do I think he actually really wants to go and become England manager at this stage in his career? No. I think the general consensus about Eddie Howe in terms of what Eddie Howe wants from his day-to-day -day job is he wants to be out on the, out on the pitch all day, every day, five days a week, mm. coaching and developing players. And that's how he's been able to get a tune out of Miguel Almiron and Sean Longstaff and Fabian Scher and Jacob Murphy, players who were there five, three, four, five years ago under Steve Bruce and in the Mike Ashley era. And they're still first team players now, which is kind of insane when you think about it for a club that's gone through yeah. that upheaval. But he's he's got he's maximized what he's squeezing every ounce of football he can out of some of those players. That's what Eddie Howe wants and does. And we think we both know you don't get that time with an England squad. So for I would sure. say not now, maybe later. Mm. Do, you do you think he's replaceable though? I mean, if he did, it did go, I think a club of Newcastle size with the money that they've got behind him, they could probably get someone of a similar quality, surely, though. Not not that oh, you'd uh, want to. I'm not saying you would want mm. to. and I'm not saying it's it's, it's as easy yeah. as that. But certainly, I think the the sort of the state of play Newcastle, the position they've got themselves over the last couple of years, they could certainly get a very good manager in, couldn't they? Yeah, I think they'd be able to lure in a manager with the project that's there and the finances. And, you know, it is a project, right? It's still ongoing. I think the whole PSR thing is prob has probably been a stumbling block. There was originally a five-year plan where we'd be, you know, eventually like going for Champions League and even, you know, getting closer to challenging for a title. I feel mm. like that five-year plan is almost reset in the last 12 months because of PSR and, and maybe it not being navig navigated very well. We yeah. sold very few players. We've not been able to sell players. So I think we all know when you don't do that and then you're spending, it just doesn't balance. So, um, yeah, it's it's a funny one. But would I want anyone else? No, because like I've just said, you know, we we have ourselves, I think he, technically his head coach you know, is his title because that's what he's doing. He's coaching and getting trying oh, to get sure. the best out of every player there. And, you know, I would argue other managers in the Premier League, like, Ten Hag is someone that jumps out to me as, you know, it's hard to say which players have really improved under Ten Hag. You might say Kobe Mainu, but he was already that good. He was coming through, you know what I mean? So uh, I think Eddie Howe is a perfect manager for where we are right now. But could they get somebody else down the line in a year or two? Yeah, of course they could, you know. I mean, look at yeah. look at some of the names that are floating around now at some of the, the clubs in the Premier League. Premier League, every Premier League team can bring in big names at this point. Um, sure. Una Emery apparently was first choice before Eddie Howe. Um and and it, it kind of broke down, but yeah, I'm happy with Eddie Howe anyway. No no interest yeah. in seeing him. Move on. Steve Bruce is going to Blackpool now. I don't know if you saw that the other day as well. <laughs> yeah, um, very There's a lot very of memes going around. Yeah, very unpopular fellow uh, up around Newcastle and among Newcastle Bless fans him. for sure. <laughs> I really hope that we eventually get them in a cup or something. I think that would oh. just be that would be poetry in motion. Um, I, I, looking ahead to Sunday though, Matt, I mean, you mentioned and we spoke about some players. Who are the players that Wolves need to keep an eye on? Who is Gary O'Neill focusing on, do you think, from that Newcastle squad? I mean, in one way you'd look at it and say, what makes Newcastle tick? And the answer is usually Bruno, Bruno Gamares. Yeah. Um, when Bruno plays well, Newcastle play well. When we don't have Bruno, we tend to lose. I mentioned I was at the Newcastle Wolves game last season, St. James's Park. And, you know, we've talked about this before, Dave, like when you when you're at a game where you can see everything on the pitch versus what a TV camera shows you to see what players do off the ball is incredible. Never mind on the ball. Bruno's one of those. He ran the entire game and he, he was the best player on both teams by by some distance. Like he just controlled everything and everything went through him. So he would be the one you'd be looking at because he, he just dictates the whole game from Newcastle perspective as well. Um, so yeah, definitely him and Isaac is the obvious one. He's just got his first Premier League goal against Tottenham, albeit it was the easiest tapping. You know, <laughs> I think you or me would probably tap it in. We wouldn't have gotten yeah. in the spot in the space, but we, we would have tapped it in if somebody put it. I don't there. know about me, yeah. Um, 
yeah. <laughs> I've seen your skills, your skills real, Dave. Um, yeah. I'd say just one other one to keep an eye on, and it's a bit of a like a bit of an interesting development. Um, would be Harvey Barnes. Harvey Barnes has started the season really well. Everyone kind of had the assumption that oh, it's Gordon and Barnes are will always only ever play on the left for Newcastle, so it's going to be one or the other, and usually Gordon. How has started to now. Maybe maybe because he doesn't have a huge amount of choice or options. He's starting to look at it, getting them both in that front three. Uh, and whether that's Barnes on the right or Gordon on the right. Um, yeah, Barnes Barnes looks really sharp. And I think he's at the age and he's probably at the, you know, he's at his kind of prime in terms of like he's completely match fit. He's sharp. He, he's looking really, really strong. And if he wants to break into an England squad again, because he was in it before, he, you know, he needs to seize that opportunity. So I'd maybe keep an eye on there. And of course, if Tonali gets a run and, or even starts... He'll get some stick, I think, Matt. The uh, Tenali will. He'll get some stick uh, on some. Doesn't care. Sure. Does, uh, he doesn't care. He, he doesn't. He's not bothered. Why would he be bothered? Uh, Italian, Italians in the Premier League, mate. I tell you, it's it's just not a thing. It's just not a thing. <laughs> um, score prediction. Can you give me one for Sunday, please? Yeah, I was actually recording a podcast earlier and on our side as well. Um, I I do th- like we've got a really good record. I was actually looking at our record in Molyneux for the last four seasons. We haven't lost. It was uh, one win and three draws, I think. Um, yeah, we beat you two one a few years ago, twenty twenty one, when Huang scored twice. Yeah, I can't even remember. I thought that was even okay. That was at the League yeah. or Cup though. That was League. That was League. Mm-hmm. Okay, I must. Have so we've actually only we've only beat you twice since we in the league since mm-hmm. we got promoted. Yeah. yeah. I think the one thing the one thing that stands out to me, like you, if you were to ask me what I'd be worried about, I think Gary O'Neill is an incredible manager, doing what he's doing with, with Wolves. Mm-hmm. But I, looking at the fact that when you you lost Neto and Kilman for close to what ninety hundred million, mm-hmm. it just doesn't on paper doesn't really look to have been reinvested. Um, I don't know, just it's just bad vibes in terms of, you know, confidence of the players and the squad depth uh, coming up against tough teams. So, I I do think that. Newcastle, like I said, a lot of players coming out of the international window with a bit of form. I think form is huge. You know, you can be fit and yeah. you can be, you know, match sharp, but form for me is, is a lot here. So I would, I would think that Newcastle should be expecting to come down and get three points. Um, in in well, like, again, we have we haven't had the hardest opening fixtures. We haven't been great. Like we did play Tottenham, we beat Tottenham, but we've got City in a couple of weeks, and you know, I, I think we need to look yeah. at this period now when. Almost every player, bar some of the long-term injuries, are now fit. So, um, like Fabian Cher is back from that suspension. So, I'd be looking at it probably not not hugely convincing, but I would say it's it's a two-one. And if if Isaac is on form, a brace to make a three-one. That's probably where. Yeah. To be fair, I mean, going back to what you were saying earlier, we have only beat you once in the last ten, in ten okay. games in the Premier League. But yeah, we did beat you at Monaco. But be, I think I think they've always, other than the reverse fixture last year, they've all been very very close. I mean. Yeah. Since 2019, February 2019, uh, draw. There were f- five consecutive 1 1 draws. Then we beat you 2 1 at our place. Thrillers. You beat us 1 yeah, 0 at, at St. James's. Then we drew 1 1 again um, a couple of years ago. We drew 2 2 at Molyneux last year. So, you know, been, Are at you Molyneux. Back in the draw, Dave? Is, that, is that what you're telling me? Mate, I think that's got to be a two. safe bet. I'm looking uh, at Molyneux, they've, they've been very, very close games. Mm. Um, so we've got a good record at Molyneux like, I know you were saying earlier so the last one two you haven't beaten you haven't beat us at Molyneux since 2017 in the championship when you beat us 1-0 that's the last and time would you, you be worried us. about your you, you mentioned that Mascara might be out injured right and obviously Max Kilman left uh, you probably miss Craig Dawson now but what, is it centre backs is it um, Totty and who no, else have you got yeah you got Totti, Dawson, and Santiago Buena, who's who oh, started Dawson, for Uruguay Dawson is, tonight. Okay, Dawson's back. Okay, Dawson's back. Yeah, Dawson's back now. He played. He played last okay. week uh, against Forest. So, okay, I'd be intrigued. I think he'll probably play because Nori, who I know you're a fan of as mm. well, he, he might play Nori a bit further forward and have Totti left back, Dawson and Mosquera okay. centre back if everyone's fit again. Um, but I'm intrigued. I think obviously we'll have players like Carlos Forbes, who would sign from Ajax on deadline day, will be available in the squad. Andre will be in the squad again. Um, so yeah, I'm interested. Obviously, I'll know more when Gary O'Neill's press conference is done on Friday. But yeah, we'll uh, we'll wait and see. But Mad, if people wish to check you out and your podcast, where can they do so? 
yeah, if you want to hear more Irish dulcet tones and Newcastle talk. Uh, so I host the Irish Mags Show podcast, which is our the Irish Newcastle Supporters Club pod. And I also um, regularly on the True Faith podcast, which is a Newcastle based um, podcast uh, across all of the Newcastle world. Perfect. Thank you very much. And apart from Sunday, mate, all the best for the rest of the season. I'll catch you very, As very usual. soon. <laughs> Speak soon, Dave. Cheers. Yes. So big thanks once again to Mad. Great to welcome him back onto the channel and have a catch up about Wolves and Newcastle. Um, I'll make, make sure I leave a link to him and his uh, podcast in the description down below. And guys, let me know your thoughts ahead of this game, your score prediction, your predicted lineup, and be sure to hit that like button down below. Like I said earlier on, unfortunately, I won't be there at Molyneux or be able to catch the game this weekend, but uh, I'm sure I'll catch up with the highlights and catch up with the boys over the weekend to see how we got on. And as always, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you're listening on the podcasts, um, be sure to leave us a five star on Apple and Spotify and uh, enjoy your weekends. Until then, I'll catch you guys very, very soon. <laughs>